Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Immortal Hulk, issue number 41. This bugs me because there apparently will be no issue 51. <laughs> like, if the rest of these comic books came out on a daily basis, they'd be finished before Christmas. And that crushes my soul, man, because, like, I'm so in love with this book. And genuinely, what am I going to do once this book is gone? Well, go back and reread it. But, I mean, how many times can I reread it? I'm not joking when I say I am going to reread all of the Immortal Hulk books and I'm going to love them because of course I will and, oh I just you ever come across a series where you don't know what you're gonna do afterwards like my god man this they're not gonna make a book like this again are they anyway let's get talking about who made the book first because credit goes where credit deserves to be Excuse me, this issue is called The Man Downstairs. Al Ewing is the writer, Joe Bennett on pencils, Roy Jose and Bellardino Bravo does the inks. Those last three all did, um, along with Paul Mounts, they did the variant cover. The main cover is Alex Ross. Colors, Paul Mounts and uh, VCs Corey Petit on letters. Um, yeah, Stanley and Jack Kirby created the, the Hulk in and of himself. The immortal part was added by Ewing. So usually we start off with a a quaint saying of sorts? No, not in this case. We start off with uh, two lousy panels from the Fantastic Four, issue number five, back when uh, Thing was more lumpy than he was Rocky. <laughs> and uh, this is actually a scene from that issue. Uh, it went on a little bit longer than just the two panels, but whatever. It was the idea that one of the reasons why the initial Hulk run was canceled at only six issues Yes, that's true. Cancelled after six issues. They're like, yeah, this book doesn't make any money. Because everybody thought, we've already got the thing. What do we need the Hulk for? Right? They didn't have a way to really separate the two. There wasn't, there really weren't that many differences between the two. So people back in the day thought, eh, whatever. Well, the guys are old and dead now. They're not dead. <laughs> Some of them might be dead. The point is, <laughs> these books, man, holy crap. We start off with Charlene, ah, what the heck is Dr. Charlene McGowan. There we go. And she's going to this version of Shadow Base that's unofficial because technically it seems from the writing that she actually created it. She built it, put it together, whatever, and put in the, the equipment in there so that it could actually be a working safe house. You get it? That for the most part, only she knew about. Now, what she's doing in there is interesting, and I'm not going to spoil that because that's the actual ending of the book. But it's funny that it begins, or excuse me, it ends, this first scene ends, and the final scene begins with her talking about how, well, hey, man, check it out. Hulk needs friends. So that's, those two parts with the friends is the bread. The meat of this book, however is Hulk fighting Ben Grimm, who's technically his friend. I love Ewing's take on these characters. I'm not going to spoil what happens in the book, but there are a lot of really great moments in here that just have me going. I do, <laughs> I do sit and wonder, while I was reading the book, I thought, what would have happened if, like, make a what-if book. What if Joe fix it? Because Banner's gone, remember? What if Joe Fixit would have said something to the effect of, well, hey, man, you know, um, I'm actually the Grey Hulk, because you keep calling me the Hulk, but I was the Grey one, you know, the one that Heimlich maneuvered your ass and knocked you out and almost left you to drown. Yeah, I wonder, what would he hit him one more time? <laughs> That's a possibility. I love this book, man. And to really get... <sighs> You know, we used to have solo Thing runs, right? We also used to have The Thing in Marvel 2 and 1. Also, fantastic books. Is it a possibility that we can get one of those books <laughs> written by Ewing? Because he seems to really understand The Thing also. In which case, I would love to see Ben Grimm come back to the forefront of the Marvel Universe. I would love to see him be one of these characters that people are just like, Yo, <laughs> you know, DC has all these guys, but but they don't have a Spider-Man. DC has these guys, but they don't have a Wolverine. I would love them to say again, as they used to, DC has all these characters, but they don't have the thing. 
because almost everybody else that Marvel has, DC has, in some way, shape, or form. And they were both copied off of each other to some extent, right? I would love, absolutely love to see the thing come back in the spotlight. And I know that Ewing is one of the main guys who could do it. Either that, maybe Zardusky's not doing too much. Oh, he's running Batman now. Damn it, once he's finished with that, it's just a miniseries. Anyway, guys, I love this book. I love just about anything that Ewing puts his hands on. And the art team in here, astounding. We're going to get another one of those multiple artist crossover issues next uh, next issue. They say it like it's a good thing. I usually see it as a bad thing. I really just want to see Bennett on here kicking ass and taking names. That's really all that I want to see here for the most part, you know? But tis what it is. Um, just forewarning, that's what's going to happen next uh, next issue. That's it for me, guys. Talk to you later. Check out comicbookuniversity.com, comicbookuni.com. And I'll talk to you all later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.